Yes, everybody, welcome to another podcast. My name is Stephen Alson, and today joining me is... What's, what's your name again? Sorry, Dimitar Berbatov. Oh, but Dimitar Ber- yeah, Dimitar Berbatov. Yes. How cool is that, by the way? Nice to meet you. You all right? Yeah. So what's happening? Wait. A lot of things are happening. So I need to know which, which one. All right, before we get stuck into it, this is brought to you by the guys at the Betfair Exchange, which we are in partnership. A little bit later on, I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the Betfair Exchange and how you can be using it and why you should be using it, because you can get some better odds. Now, before we get into that, me and Dimitar are going to have a, a bit of a chat about what's going on at United, a little bit about his career at United, how it started and how it sadly came to an end, and maybe whatever else takes our fancy. So, uh, I have a question, though. Go on. Then. Why are you speaking so quick? We're not speaking quick. Yeah, because I didn't understand anything you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I do apologize. And I have a good experience with my major manager was Scottish. You know that. Yeah. So it's difficult to understand. That. I can imagine he's pretty difficult to understand. But after time, you get used to that and then you're okay. All right, cool. Um, how fucked are we at the minute? Oh, that's too strong of a... Okay. Of a, how do you say? Should we go, should we go lighter? Are you not? No, are you too not? strong of a, of opinion to give at the moment. We are not there at the fact. Okay. We are still a bit far away from that, in my opinion. We're not fucked. Not yet. <laughs> but we'll be fucked if, if we uh, achieve Liverpool record of not winning the title for so many years. Then we are fucked. Right, so what is the Betfair Exchange? Maybe you've heard about it, maybe you've not. The Betfair Exchange is... Unlike any other betting platform that is out there, it offers a lot more markets, options and opportunities than the majority of places that are out there. The biggest feature that punters notice when they're on the exchange website or even the app is the option to back or to lane. And for a lot of people that can be intimidating, but I'm here to show you why it shouldn't be intimidating and why it might actually become a new way for you to find some of the bets that you'd like to place. A back bet then. Now, the backing of a bet works exactly the same way as on virtually every other usual bookmaker is the way it works. Um, you find a bet, you like the odds, you fancy that to happen, you place the bet. It's easy. And that is absolutely the same. There is no difference for that whatsoever. So if you like that and you don't really want to dip your toes into the more advanced features of the exchange, then that's sound. So for an example bet then, let's just say, okay, for now the odds are decimal and that can be a little bit intimidating or different at times for some people to check out, but it is actually pretty easy to work out. If I place a bet on United, I'm going to say a tenner on United to win the Europa League at 7.8. I'm going to win £68. Very straightforward, very easy to work out and stop laughing at the back. United might actually win the Europa League. We're in it at least, so there's half a chance of that. So that's a very, very straightforward bet and a very easy bet to work out. So for example, bet on the lay side where it says stake. I write what I want to win this time, not what my stake would be as if I was writing it on the backing side. My liability for this is going to be £86. The liability covers me for the eventuality that I have to pay someone winning on the other side of that bet. So as you can see, it's quite simple. And I think that these outright Europa League bets are probably the way to go if you want to truly understand the way the backing and the laying really works. You know, for example, if like me, you go, listen, I have no idea what's going to go on with the Europa League, but I don't think United are going to win it. I don't think Arsenal are going to win it. Maybe that's what you want to do then. Maybe you want to go and lay some of those on. And maybe you can put some of the other odds on, maybe a smaller fee or a smaller one on a back bet for someone that you actually think might win it. And you know what? In another video, we can start getting into trades and all that sort of stuff as well, where you can actually find some genuine value on the exchange. But until then, back to Berber. And this is troubling to think about. So that's why we need to find the, the winning formula as soon as possible. We are approaching 10 years, really. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll get to 10 years without winning one? I well, that's what I said. I don't want to get there. But we are approaching it. Why we are approaching it? Why? Do, do you know who have the answer for that? I think there's many different people. What do you think? Well, everybody's with different opinion. Probably everybody's entitled to their opinion. I don't have the answer, to be honest. I can go and on and on, probably, and why is this and why is that, and this guy is not playing. But overall, I don't think there is uh, just one answer. Probably it's a lot of answers combined together give you the big picture. Uh, don't try, I don't try to be too critical. It's always try to stay positive in a way, because it's easy to, to criticize. I've been there in, in, on the other way. And I know how unpleasant it is to put your TV on and hear someone speaking about you and saying shit about you. And you know that you didn't play well, particular game, 
you know that. But then when you hear someone else say it, the obvious thing, and someone who is, let's say, achieved less than you, or cannot play as good as you, give opinion about you, then it can piss you off. I was just about to say, does that piss you off? But obviously it does piss you off. Yeah, it did. When, you, when you're real with yourself, it, that is. You know, when you're real and you say, I didn't fucking play anything in this game. I know that. But please, don't give me fucking shit all the time. I know that I didn't play well. I want to play well. Do you think any player who wants to play bad for his team? Do you, need, do, you need, do you think any player wants to do that? I don't think so. He, everybody wants to do well. Sometimes it's not happening. Sometimes more often than people want to. And I'm sure that the players are doing everything they can to correct that. I cannot assume that one player would try to play bad for Manchester United. And even if he wants to do that, he still be there. It's not possible. So obviously they're not playing up to the standards of Manchester United, but let's try not to be so critical. All right, and one thing that if you could change it today, that would make Manchester United better or put us back on the path to getting back to winning ways, to, get to competing for titles again, what would be the one thing you'd change? The one thing is not going to fix it. That's what I said before. But if you could just change one thing to start that off. The one thing is not going to fix it. But let me think about it for one, two seconds here. <laughs> one thing. What is your one thing then? <sighs> no, it's not so easy. It isn't easy, no. Mm -hmm. um, I think it means, I think recruitment, because I think we've allowed a lot of very, very good players to leave, a lot of experienced players to leave, and they haven't been properly replaced. And I don't care if Fergie's back there today. I don't think he wins the title with his team. You think? No, not at all. I don't think Fergie comes close to winning but the title. But do you think, for example, okay, that's a good point, but in Ferguson, you have someone for 25 years in charge winning so many titles. We had bad games. We had good players, bad players in the team. Sometimes mix. sometimes people were thinking, what the fuck, how is that team possible to win a game under Ferguson? When you see the starting lineup, probably I was inside as well. But when you have that much of respect for your manager and he's commanding that respect, even if you are not as good as a player as you are and other players, then you're going to work hard purely because you are not afraid, but still a bit afraid of your manager and you have the respect towards him. And you want to, even if you don't have it, you want to win his respect. And then you're going to put even more effort into the game. And this can give you that extra that you need sometimes in the games. But I agree with you, sometimes recruitment, probably we need to buy more, more players. And the other day I read the information that Manchester United had uh, record revenue, six, 150 millions, I think. So we're not short of money. So there must be something else. I don't know. Uh, for me, it's not always, and I totally agree. I think Fergie got more out of the sum of his teams than he probably should have done at times, especially that final title win. Um, but Fergie also didn't win titles in the middle 2000s when we had Rio, mm -hmm. Keane, Scholes, Giggs. Rooney, Ronaldo. So you're saying sometimes with big players, you cannot win the league? I'm saying that it's, you've got to have a team good enough to win the league. Mm -hmm. So even if we had seven or eight good players, bringing in the likes of Michael Carrick, uh, yourself, was what the final pieces of those jigsaw, jigsaws were yeah, for the but, squad. But not always, because you're depending, you're in competition with other teams. And sometimes you need all these pieces of the puzzle. You play bad, you don't win, but the other team who is chasing you, they didn't win as well. So it's luck for you. And I think I say to the people many times that, you know when Ferguson was more happy? Most happy, when we won one nil. Not five, six, seven, or eight, two against Arsenal. One nil. Purely what, because- What was that against Arsenal? Eight, two. Eight, two. So he was more happy than one nil. He go into the dressing room all glowing, you know, and like he was winning the Champions League. And patting everybody on the back, you know, well, like this. The reason for that, clean sheet, you have to work hard for it, you have okay. There we go. Championship result, one new. And I, I, I think that one year we become champions and I was watching the sheets. Uh, they give you a piece of paper with the results, you know, after every game, actually. But then in the end, I was going through it and I was, I think I saw one new 10 times. 
one, 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 one nil. In the end, you're a champion. To be honest, it doesn't matter who you beat, big team or small team, because if you beat a, if you beat a big team and then you lose against small team, what's the difference? It's two, three points. You know, it's actually, actually, it's more easy to motivate yourself and concentrate against the big teams. The other way around, against the small team, this is where you need fucking to work hard on your mental strength and to motivate yourself. This is where sometimes the titles are winning. Is that a real thing, do you think, that uh, from your own perspective, but if you play against a team in, in a relegation fight, you play against a team that's nothing to play for, you have to motivate yourself differently to when it's of course. Liverpool, City, yeah. Arsenal, Chelsea. Yeah, because uh, Liverpool, it's Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, big teams, big players, you know that. So you don't need anyone to tell you how you need to motivate. And even if you do, then you're fucked. Because you need to motivate yourself. Then when you play a small team, you know you're bigger than them. You know you have big, uh, bigger players. Everything is bigger. And then this can lead to underestimating them, thinking that you are fucking the greatest one alive. And sometimes, I've been there, I lived it, they can beat you. And then you go down to the ground. So better to take steps to prevent that than actually happening. Not all the time you can do that, but at least you try. Uh, what would you say to United fans at the minute then? Because there's a lot of frustrated United fans with how the team's playing, the direction of the club and all that lot. Well, it's not easy being a manager, for fuck's sake. You think you can be manager of United? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not easy, guys. It's not easy. 25, 30 players, big egos, big personality, different personalities. You need to tell someone he's not playing the next game. What the fuck, boss? Why am I not playing? Then you start to explain, well, I not agree with you. Then you need to come, you need to know how to speak with everybody differently. Some players like to be touched gently, you know. Other players need a smack in the fucking head. So you need to know how to, and this is what motivates them, you know. That's why everybody's different. And it's not easy. In the end of the day, you're playing other team who are constantly developing and trying to catch up to you. In, in case of Manchester City, for example. Hard truth is, and I don't want to say it, they are ahead of us now. How is that even possible? Fucking hell. I didn't imagine that happening. But it is what it is. And sometimes you need to pay respect where respect is due and say, okay, they're playing well, but let's use that anger, frustration, and try to fucking beat them. You kind of famously turned City down, didn't you? City yeah. down United. How did that go down? With who? Well, how close was you to John Well, it was it was not it was close and not close because my agent told me that they are coming for me and they want to sign me and I say okay, thank you, fuck off, Manchester United, a history, the manager, the titles, the players, the stadium, everything. You know, this is what you for me. It was what I wanted. You know, because sometimes you are. Uh, getting in love with the history of something, you know, with the past. You say, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the future. And I think, still think it was the right choice for me to do and, and never regret it because it was, it, it was it is something magical in the badge. I don't know what it is. Still it is for me because it's still Manchester United. Best moment for you when you was at United? When I signed it because this was my personal, uh, um, how do you say, my personal top like mountain top for me, this is my top. Everybody have a different top in their life. You with the things you do, other people do what they want to do. For me, this was my personal top. Coming from a small country, going through what I've been going through my life. So signing for United more than winning with United. Yes, because it was like, okay, Burps, it was worth it. It was worth it. You you, you saw and you've been where I started, actually. You showed me before we started here. The, you saw the stadium and everything. Just fucking shit all, no, no disrespect, but... Yeah, like. I know, it, it, that's why <laughs> it's sad that back home we don't have the infrastructure to, to stay there all my life and good players to come to my country to play. And then I need to go out of my country and prove myself in different country. You know how difficult that is? But then it's more uh, sweet, success. Because you're sitting at home after you sign with Man United, and you're tired emotionally, drained, but you're happy because fucking hell, I've done it. Who is the other Bulgarian who played for Man United? Do you know any? Nope. No. No. I was the most happiest moment of my life. Um, worst moment in a United shirt? 
worst moment people probably associated that when I didn't play for the final. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I was left out. Still think I didn't deserve it. Uh, it was, uh, I think Sir Alex also admitted that a while ago that he didn't make the mistake, not only with me, but with, uh, with Jason, the, the final before that. But then I was thinking, Berbs, even if you play in that game, I don't think you'll make any difference. You know, Barca was so good. But then at the same time, you're thinking from the manager perspective. You try to think about it. You say, because in the, if I am going to be manager, probably I'll do the same decisions. You're going to hurt someone. It is what it is. Every time you make a decision who is going to play, you hurt someone else who is not playing. You know, and you try to find a reason for that. Uh, so this was one of the moments. The other probably that we didn't win the title. Man City beat us in the last minute. Well, the one when we drew it, we drew it. We just let them have the trophy. <laughs> that was, we, we got loads. I was, yeah, I remember that shit. It was, we were, we were jumping and, yeah, champions. And then at the same time, well, fuck, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was entertaining for the, for the fans and for the league and for England as, as all. Not but, for United fans. But not for us, it was painful. It's... I watched it in a pub and it was half United and half City. What a fucking stupid idea that was, by the way, that they did this. And United's screen went off. Yeah, yeah. And I think the last face I saw was Phil Jones celebrating. And then our screen just went blank and everyone's just kind of standing there. And then there was a cheer from the next room and we was like, okay, they've equalised, but no. Then there was another cheer. And then they all started coming in the room. And I was like, I'm fucking going home. <laughs> just fucking went yeah, straight home. Because I, I, I think it went off. Quite badly. It was it was painful, and uh, we watched after that. We watched the, the the goals they score, and you're thinking, "Fucking hell, guys!" I know. How many times does Aguero shin that into the crowd if he does that again? <laughs> Fuck's sake! It was no. It was different. Uh, I be, I do believe in fate in a way, in science in life that you need to read. Uh, so it, it, it was meant to happen, probably, in a way. I don't know. It was meant to happen, but it was painful for us. Was your United career too short? Uh, in a way, yes. I, I was, when I, in the last time, when I go to Fulham after that, I was actually had the choice to stay one more year because my contract was still going on. But that's why everybody's different. I was easily can stay for Man United. But then when you're real with yourself, I was telling myself, Berbs, hey, we can stay. No problem. You take your salary, you train with one of the biggest players in the world, manager and everything, but are you going to be happy if you're not playing? Are you going to be happy if you're not playing? So the moment I say no, because I still love to play, I want to play football. I carry my ego with me and I play football purely because I love football. Money, fame, everything comes after that. And if I stayed, I would play probably three or four games, but that's it. I wasn't going to be happy. That's why I decided to go to a place where I'm going to, to be played. I'll be the first choice. And then I'm going to put my smile on, on my face again. And you only technically retired last week, didn't you? Yes. Officially but retired it happens. It happens probably one year ago. And I know it sounds strange and probably stupid. And I was telling to myself, now people are going to laugh a little bit. Uh, but, and people around me was telling me, well, don't do it because it looks strange. But I own it to people back home to give it a closure in a way, because they're following me through my career, and not only back home, but uh, people around the world. But especially back home, they're asking me, Berbs, when are you gonna play next? Who is your next team, you know? Th things like this, and I'm 38. I'm not 28, oh, I look 28, you know that. But I'm 38, but I'm 38. So <laughs> I'm like thinking, well, this, these people, they want me to still play, it's flattering, you know, it's a compliment, but. Not I, fancy like a, a like, you see what Zlatan's doing in the MLS? And I respect that. And maybe, probably, probably, he has something more than me. So Do you not think you could play him? I'm pretty sure you could probably, without even a minute's training, get out and, and no, play No, the MLS. not anymore, because when you didn't play and train professionally, your body is not used to that anymore. So your muscles are more relaxed now. You can easily, you can easily get injured straight away. Uh, if I was to carry from my last team, uh, and, and continue to train professionally and trying to find something, then I will probably be playing. But huge respect to, to Zlatan because he's 38, still going on strong and destroying the fence there. It doesn't matter where. 38 to be moving and playing like he is, it's unbelievable. 
especially the way he can get his head, uh, his foot above his head. That's yeah. just outrageous, isn't it? Absolutely outrageous. Uh, you were just telling me a little bit of a story about PAOK when you was playing over in Greece. <laughs> about, um, the, well, the differences. Um, for those who have not seen the vlog that I did when I went to CSK Sofia, which is where uh, Berber started his career, um, it's fucking crazy. Like, there's no two ways around it. It was a crazy atmosphere. And you said, that ain't shit compared to PAOK. Well, in the Balkans, we are different. You saw before game torches and everything. You don't have this in England. And I told you, uh, when I left my country, and I played my, for my country one year only. So when, then I go to Germany. In Germany to see that, no chance. Then uh, England, and then I go to France, and then I go to Pauk. But it's been, so 17 years, I've been outside my country, at the Balkans. So I go to Pauk, first games, and I see torches going on like this, and I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Because I, I am, what is the word that you're not used to that anymore? How do you say that? On a custom. Yeah, anymore. So I'm thinking, fucking hell, Barps, is, Barps has been a long time. And it's strange to me because I'm used to different things. And then when you don't win, you know, fans are getting angry because they're so passionate about their teams. And like starting to give advice. Why the fuck you not playing? How is you playing? And I'm like thinking, who the fuck are you going to tell me how to play? Winning championship and you're going to tell me how to play. Fucking hell, they come to the dressing room. You know, I was, I was showering and then I, I get injured in that game and I shower. And I'm in a bad mood and I go out of, of the of the shower and I'm limping. And I see three people in the dressing room from the fence. Ultras. The, and I'm like, what what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> you know? And they're like, well, you play shit. Well, you, we need to speak with you guys. <laughs> and we start to have a conversation, civil conversation, actually, uh, to see, you know, to explain to them that I don't think this is necessary because young players in the team, they want to do well. You know, so you don't, do you think you can do anything by coming here? You put more pressure. So next time they're going to be even more afraid to do anything, you know. So leave it to people who knows how to deal with it. You'll be fine. It was it was a different experience sometimes in in our country in the Balkans there. Then, do you think fans can walk into the dressing room after a game here? No, but maybe they should. Uh, why? What, what what thing is going to? Well, happen? yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you're not really going to change it. And you mentioned like putting players under pressure and all that lot. Like United's online fan base at the moment is pretty toxic, to be honest. Why? No way. It's just abusing, yeah. just absolutely abusing players left, right and centre. Yeah, I know. Are the players aware of that? For sure. You know, this is one of the problems. We're all human beings. Now, it doesn't matter where you go, we're all connected. Now, social media. You've got three phones there, by the way. Newspapers, you know, stuff like friends. Even if you didn't read something, a friend of you, a friend is going to come and say, you know what they say about you? You know? And you're going to find out eventually. Then you read it, and you're like, what the fuck? Maybe your mother or your father is going to read it. Or someone else is going to tell you. And it's going to affect you. It doesn't matter how strong you think you are, it's going to affect you. And then this is going to affect your game. Yes, sometimes we all deserve it. And I say, oh, you, me, because you have your podcast or show us whatever, but maybe I watch it and then I put a comment. What the fuck? You don't know what you're doing. How are you going to feel? Not good, you know? So you have situation like this, but this is the world we, we live in now. And you need to be mentally strong. But it's not easy when you read comments like this. But everybody should remember that I am better than you in some area of life. You are better than me in some other area of life. Okay, don't forget that. So it's too harsh to judge all the time. Because probably all the people who are judging, if they are put into the pitch, they'd be shit as well, for sure. It's not easy, honestly. And, of course, sometimes everybody deserves the criticism, but the word you use, toxic, it's described that it's really bad at the moment. You know? And it's probably deserving, but is it going to help when it's toxic like that? Do you think uh, something new is said in this environment? Like other criticism, how do you say? Criticism constructural, how do you say that? Constructive. Yeah, constructive. Is it going to help in any way or is it just purely uh, personal? Because if, it's, if it is personal, it's not going to help in any way. I, I don't know anywhere else to go after that, but Berber, thank you very much, mate. This is an absolute pleasure. Uh, make sure to check the description and come and check out what we're doing on the Betfair Exchange. And there'll be more from me and Berber a little bit later on. Laters.